the text adventure. Um, this, uh, sorry it's been so long between this one and the last one, but I had a few kinks to work out with the battle state that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, we're going to add two more functions to this, a game over state, which is going to check um, whether or not um, our character has died, and then produce a game over stream from that. And it just checks specifically the character, because I know we had the is dead function, but that will check both the character and the enemy. And then we're going to look at the battle state and link in the loot table from there. And then there's going to be a fifth and final video, which puts everything into a loop and goes from that point there. So from that point, you know, you might be able to finish it off yourself from this video, um, but if not, there will be one more video after this. So let's get going on it. So First thing first, um, let's just really create a quick new function which is going to check a game over state for us. And I'm going to explain um, what it's going to be taking in a second. So it takes, it's going to take one argument, and this argument is going to be a boolean. And um, we'll program where it gets this from in the battle state. So we're going to just uh, set this up ready to go. So if the enemy is dead, basically, um, so if that returns as a true, if that gets passed through as a true, we're just going to print time for another battle, and then the game will go, you know, it will go on to the next battle from there. If it doesn't get passed true, obviously the only other thing it's going to get passed is false, or should be the only other thing it should get passed is false. And if that is the case, at this point, if the uh, the way we're going to do this, um, if the enemy is um, isn't dead, when we check this, what it means is that our character is dead instead. And we'll talk about that in a second and how that's working. There are other ways to do it, but I've just found that this one works um, quite straightforward um, if you kind of get your head around this first bit. So, I'm just going to have a couple of statements here and then finish with an exit statement. And that is the game over function done, okay? It's not gonna be the cleanest exit, because it's gonna go like, do you wanna quit, you'll hit okay. Now it'll come up with all like, the red text and stuff like that, but it will kick them out of the game and then they can start from there. You can make a more elegant solution to yours, maybe you want like a full like credit screen to roll or something like that. Um, might be something else to think about later on down the line. Right, so let's get into it, the bit that actually pulls the whole thing together and the point of the game. So we're actually gonna start looking at the battle here. So the battle is gonna take um, our enemy and it's going to take our character. Now, one thing to say before we get started on this. When I first started, when I was testing this, and one of the reasons this video is taking so long to work out is because the generated enemy, when I was testing this, every time they attacked my character, they were actually adding uh, health to the character. And the problem is um, that my generated enemy didn't have, um, when they were generated with a very low attack, so here the enemy generated, when the attack was very low, it meant that um, when they attacked the character, um, when we put them through the enemy attack function here, which takes the attack value and minuses the defense, basically if our defense was more than their attack value, it would make the loss a minus number. And then if we min if we then took our damage and then we minus a minus number from it, we're actually adding a number to it. So what we need to make sure we do is always make sure that the enemy's attack is going to be more than um, our defense kind of thing, or else it's going to be unfair at some point. You're going to be attacking enemies and they'll be giving you health instead of taking it away. So I'm going to tweak these numbers here in the enemy generator and just make their attack uh, 10 and 15 or something like that. You know, you're going to need to play around with these numbers either way because there are so many variables within this which could, uh, which could end up uh, giving you, you know, little boosts and glitches and things like that so it's just going to be a case of trial and error but if you end up with your character being having health added to them instead of taken away when you're being attacked that is likely where the issue lies so once you've done that let's actually just print out uh, for our user just a little menu so they're going to give them two uh, three options they're going to do the, of the sword attack a ranged attack and a magic attack And then we're going to take their um, choice as an input here. I'm going to check this choice. So the choice here, we need to just do a quick check on it before we get started. Um, now, before we even get started, we could actually 
actually go go back here for a second because we need to start the loop out properly. So in our battle state here, I've jumped the gun a little bit, but I'm just, um, just going to literally write a little intro, something about you know um, about the an enemy an enemy appearing. Okay, so little intro here. What's that coming over the hill? I'm going to use a getter to get the enemy's name, whoever, whatever enemy's been generated. I'll get the name here. Um, then I'm just going to print out the variables of the enemy, you know, just so we can see it. And then before we do anything else, we're going to set a battle variable, and we're going to set this to true. So this battle variable here is kind of what we're going to be uh, checking on as we um, as we go through this next bit here. So what we want to do. Is we want to set a while loop so while the battle is the same as true because we're going to toggle this on and off we want to print um, we want this to be indented underneath it so we're going to actually print um, the options for the user and then choice equals input so just make sure you do that because um, obviously we need to indent once under our while loop so just tab these in once so one and then this one once in as well, so it's indented under the while loop. So once we've got our user's input, what we want to do is we want to now um, just check that input. So basically they can only put one, two, or three in. If they put something else in, um, it should throw an error. So we're gonna check the choice. So while the choice is not equal to one, and it's not equal to two, and, sorry, I need to do and choice, and again, and choice is not equal to three, then we're going to trap them in a loop until they do like write down what they should be doing. Um, so I'm literally going to print and then just give them the option again here. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward stuff that bit there. So we're going to say, um, so basically, if they don't put one, two, or three in, they'll go round and round in this while loop until they do it correctly. And then once they do it correctly, um, we can then check, um, um, you know, what happens next. So with the choice is equal to one, what we want to do is we want to get the characters' um, just regular damage. So the damage is equal to the generated character dot get attack and again remember we're using getters and setters in this so we're not accessing the character's attribute directly because I said before and um, that's really bad practice to access things directly so we're going to use the methods we uh, we actually program to return these values edit them outside the class and put them back in the class if we need them um, using getters and setters um, it's key for a level to do this um, because that's uh, kind of key to object oriented programming um, it's called encapsulation it means that you can't just go ahead and edit different bits and pieces um, and the same again for the, choice, the second choice and the third choice so I'm just going to type this in quickly so this here will actually uh, th this should catch everything so we're only letting one two or three through so we've got one two and everything else will be a three um so uh that will actually generate our damage whether it's attack arranged or magic you know if you want to give your characters other things to do you can put it in here though um so we're going to do um winding up for the attack and then we're going to generate the hit chance so we have a, a function which generates a hit chance for us. So hit equals hit chance. And the arguments it takes are the generated characters luck. So gen character dot luck. Oh sorry, gen character dot get luck, because we're gonna use a getter to get it. Get luck. And then obviously that's a method, so uh, that's a function, so it needs to double brackets there. That'll get the luck, um, and that will return whether or not we actually hit. So it gets returned as a boolean, true or false. If you check the uh, hit chance function, you will see that. So if the hit, uh, so if hit is returned as true, um, we are going to want to obviously um, hit the enemy. So we're going to um, do the generate enemy dot set health. So we're using their setter again as well, and we're going to set it to the generate enemy dot get health, so whatever their health is currently, minus the damage that we've done. 
So we are setting their health to whatever their current health is using the get health function minus the damage which we've actually generated up here. So the da damage from our get attack, get ranged or whatever, okay? So that'll actually um, reduce the enemy's health for us there. And just a couple of print statements, a bit of flavor text about how we've hit them. So there we go, so we've, uh, you've hit the enemy, Your the enemy's health is now this, and then we use the getter again to get their new health, um, and then uh, and then that that is it. So you know the, en the enemy's um, been hit and their health has been set, and we can see what their new health is, so we can make a choice moving forward. Now, if we don't hit, obviously we miss. So we're not going to do this bit here where we set their health. We're just going to say that we missed. Um, so obviously you need to make sure this uh, generated character's luck, um, if this is too low, you're always gonna miss and things like that. So again, this is one of those areas which you're gonna need tweaking, you're gonna need to play around with it. You need to work out what you're gonna generate your own character's luck at, and then you know what a good threshold for like a hit to miss value is. Because if you're missing 70% of the, the chances you're putting through, the game's not gonna be any good, and it's gonna be kind of broken at that point. So what we want to do here, at this point, we need to check if the enemy's dead. So we're going to do a func, we're going to uh, call a variable enemy dead equals um, is dead because we've just attacked our enemy, and it's going to take the enemy's um, health. So this again is going to return a true or false. So if um, they are basically if they're full, if they're still alive, we're going to uh, allow them to attack us back. If they are dead, we're gonna um, we're gonna roll through and we're gonna um, move on to another character and like do our loot tables and things from that. Okay, so if the enemy dead um, is equal to sorry, enemy dead is equal to false, we're going to now um, use the uh, enemy attack uh, function that we created. So gen character dot set health. Okay, um, so again using their setters. Um, and the arguments to set their health, we're going to say it's the um, we're going to get the current health of our character. So gen character dot get health. Um, I'm going to actually make the screen bigger here because it's actually quite a long function. Sorry, long set of arguments in here. So we get our health and we minus the enemy attack. Now enemy attack, like we said, is a is a function we created and it takes um, a couple of different things. So in order for the enemy attack to run, it takes the enemy chance of hit, so it's going to be uh, gen enemy dot get chance and it takes the enemy's attack as well, so gen enemy dot get attack Ooh, attack, and then it takes the name as well. Gen enemy dot get name, and then it takes our character's defense. So gen character dot get defense. Okay, and if you want to have a look at how that actually works together, so remember we should have like this like four brackets on the end kind of thing, so bracket, bracket, and then like three extra brackets from the end of that to close the whole thing up. Um, if you want to go back up and look at how the enemy attack works, you'll see that we're actually getting our defense, we're minusing uh, their attack, and the um, the value which is returned is the amount of damage they do. Um, the, the name of things like that is just kind of like the a little bit of flavor text as we go through. So we're going to set our, uh, our character's health to that, um, so it's such a long function, but I'll leave it on the screen. I'll pause it now if you need to type it out. Um, and then what we need to do from that, so once we've done that, we actually need to make sure that we uh, check whether or not our character is dead now. So just like we did the, is the enemy dead? We're going to check if our character is dead as well. So from that hat, hit, character dead uh, equals is dead. And we're going to do it as the gen character dot get health. So that will get our character's health, and that will return a true or false from that. Okay. So 
if the character um, dies uh, due to the enemy attack, we're going to uh, do like a, a game over. But we'll, we'll look at that in, in just a second. So if the character, let's see, character dead uh, equals true, or it's the same as true, the battle equals false. And we're actually going to return false as well. Okay, we'll talk about this return function in a second because um, this is what we're going to check in the game over bit here. Okay, so we're going to return that here. If we return false and then that goes into here, well, if we return false, we end up going to this bit here, which then exits the program. So at this point here, if we end up triggering this, so our character's died, we return false, we end up going into that game over function, and then that will trigger the whole game to close from there. We'll go for it and we'll show it, we'll see it working in a second. Um, and then we just need our else statement from there. So else, we're just going to return the character's health or something like that, print. Obviously, add a bit more flavor text, make it a bit more interesting. So I'm just saying, gen character dot get health. So I'm just saying here, um, your character's remaining health is this, and then we use the getter again to get the health and return it uh, here. Okay, so. So here, if the enemy isn't dead, we are going to um, attack. This part here looks at if the enemy uh, is dead. So if the enemy is dead, we're going to break out the battle loop. So battle equals false, and then we will go from there. So if uh, enemy dead is the same as true. So this next bit here is going to just check um, is going to just check uh, whether or not. Uh, whether or not we're going to generate some loot. So actually we don't need that there because that's the same as this function here. So we're going to stop that battle and then we're going to say we've defeated the enemy and then we're going to call the loot function. So loot gen character dot get luck and the generated character as well because we mess with their sort of uh, gets and sets in there as well. So it's based on our luck, whether or not we get any loot from it. And these are the attributes that we're going to me be messing with from there. And we return true. Okay. So a couple of points here. We've got our character dying at this point will return false, which will stop the whole function from there. Um, and then that will be going into the game over state. If this doesn't trigger, we end up uh, generating the loot and returning true so that means that the enemy that will return true we'll put true into here if the enemy dead equals equals true time for another battle I suppose I could have put the loot function in here as well but it doesn't really matter because it's, it's in its own function it's only one line and that is it for the game over function and the game uh, and the actual battle state as well so let's actually test to make sure the whole thing works so um, down the bottom here, just got my testing bit to see if it works. So um, I'm going to do. Oh, look at that! I've actually already put a uh, um, a battle state in here. So my enemy dead here is going to take. So just make sure you're generating like level boss equals false because that's going to generate your characters and, and things like that. When we actually generate a, a, an enemy, uh, we don't be generating bosses while we're testing, so that will make it. You know, it might make it hard to test and things like that. So after a battle, we want to we will end up returning true or false as enemy dead. And then what we want to do is the game over function is going to take that. Um, actually, I'm going to change the name of that so to who died or something like that. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's going to take that. It's going to then check whether it's true or false, and then if it's true, basically that means uh, we've we've died and the, the game will end. And uh, if it's uh, if it's false, um, that sorry, if it's false, it means that we died and the game will end. And if it's true, um, it will come back out of it. And we should be able to do this again and fight another generated enemy, and then check the game over state again and again and again. And we see how it goes from here. Okay, so in theory, we should run. It should run three fights here 
three battles here, and then it should check after each battle whether or not we've hit like a, a game over state. So let's run it and see how it looks. Okay, so immediately I've got something which is wrong. Um, why have I got? Oh, do I? Have I got too many brackets on the end here? So it's my really long function which is causing an issue. Um, let me just have a look. So I've got have I got one too many brackets on there. One, two, three. Take one of them off. Oh yeah. Did I have one too many? I think I've got one too many. Yeah, I had one too many on there. So it should be three brackets on the end here. Uh, so um, make sure you do that. Yeah, three brackets on the end there. So let's run it again and see what happens. Okay, good. So we've generated um, our hero here. Um, looks like it's gone straight into our battle state here. It's generated us a motionless deer to fight. Uh, please make sure you change the adjectives on your text files because the amount of poor animals I've defeated in this game. Um, so we want to now test that all of these three things work. So let's first of all test that um, it doesn't take anything else apart from one, two, and three. So at the moment, numbers, you know, it is saying oops each time it's letting me go through again. So that, that's working. And let's put one, two, and three in all together. And that's not working either. So that's absolutely fine. So let's try a sword attack. Okay. So the sword attack's worked. It's told me my the enemy's health is 43. So let's check the enemy's starting health. The enemy's starting health was 53, my attack is 10, so that is working as intended at the minute. They have uh, they have missed, so let's carry on attacking for a second. So they uh, they have um, they have attacked us, it does uh, 13 damage to us at this point, so it might, again, this might be something that we need to tweak the amount of damage that our enemies are doing and things like that. Let's keep fighting through, so their, attack, their health at the moment is 3, as is 61. Hopefully what's going to happen is I'm going to attack again, it's going to reduce the enemy's health down to 0, it's going to check whether or not we've generated any loot, and then it will check whether or not um, we're going to generate the game over state, and then it's going to run again, or it'll throw an error. Didn't throw an error, so let's have a check here. So. The enemy's health went to minus seven. We defeated the enemy. Um, did it drop any loot? So it's running the loot bit. It's checked for us and it's actually got the iron sword. It's then used the attribute of the iron sword and used the uh, gen character dot set attack to set our new attack to 25. So our attack value was 10. So we've added 15 to it because that must be the, uh, the attribute of the iron sword. And then from there, it started with a new battle. So let's just see if I'm now doing 25 damage a piece. So uh, my enemy's health was 65, I did one attack and I took 25 off. So that's working as intended at the moment. So this poor grateful bottlenose dolphin doesn't look like it stands a chance. Uh, so we're gonna go through here uh, and there we go again. So straight away, it, it more or less, like uh, we won that really, really easy on that one. Um, so enemy's health is now 10. Um, and again, we've got we've got a wooden sword which adds 10 to our attack. So we can see here, the more we fight and the more we win, the easier these fights are gonna be. So at this point here, so I've completed all of mine and um, I've got my four leaf clover here, it's added to my luck. And then at the end here, we can see my new attributes. So my attack went right up, my defense didn't change at all um, and my, my health and luck uh, from there. Um, so, what you can do now is, oh, what you should be doing now is you should be changing these attributes to make sure um, that they are actually, um, you're getting fair attributes and you're not ending up um, adding to your health and things like that. But that is the battle state done, so that's the battle state and the game over state done. Next time I'm just going to add a main loop which pulls everything together, so it'll be like a character creation type screen and then like a main loop that pulls all the game together and then generates a boss and then maybe generates like a credit screen or something like that, okay? So um, the next video will not be as long or as wait as this one, so we will see you next time.